More now on our top story. Toronto Mayor Rob Ford says he won't resign or step down. Joining me now in studio is Toronto City Councillor Joe Mihavik. Thank you for being here, Councillor. Great to be here. Thank you. So you heard the mayor's comments on his radio show today. What's your reaction? Well, I, I think I'm feeling what many Torontonians are feeling and saying on the Twitter world. Uh, this is a gross abuse of power and very irresponsible for the chief magistrate of the biggest city in Canada to not take responsibility for his actions. He should have come out clean, he should have spoke truthfully, and he should have taken responsibility for not one event or two events, but a pattern of events, both on the addictions and dependency side of things, but also on the relationships that he has with people who are in conflict with the law. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those who would say, well, you know what, he came out and he was just being human. He, ad he admits he's made mistakes, he's going to do his best to change, and I I I'll try and work it out from here on in. And, and, you know, maybe that's the most he can do right now. Well, I think part of... We all want to give people the benefit of the doubt and find a way for them to move on and to do better. Uh, but this is a person who has had one opportunity, two opportunities, three opportunities, and also a, a mayor who has never apologized and never actually taken responsibility for anything. There's been a pattern, frankly, of uh, bullying people uh, in other positions, but himself not holding himself up to the standard that he says he holds himself up to and that he imposes on others. So it is one thing to say, yes, let's just move on and all be nice, but you have to have some reckoning with the pattern of behavior that you've presented the public up until this point. And obviously, this was today was his opportunity to do that, and he hasn't done that. Mm, so what were you hoping to hear more specifically from the mayor? Well, I was hoping that he would basically take a time out. Maybe not resign, but just say, I'm going to take a time out for two months, three months. I'm going to deal with my addictions and dependency issue. I'm going to pass the reins of power over to the deputy mayor and ask him to hold the ship of state together during this period of time. I would have hoped that he would have spoken to some of the issues related to the criminal be behavior or possible criminal behavior of some of the people that he associates with. He would have explained how he's going to uh, change his ways uh, dealing with addictions and dependency. I think that full reckon reckoning, that transparency, is something that I think Torontonians were expecting and sadly which wasn't delivered today. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to pit the two of you against each other, but we did speak with the Deputy Mayor, Norm Kelly, and he felt that he had heard enough, that, you know, he, there was an apology. Um, mind you, it wasn't as broad sweeping as I think many would have hoped, but you know, he felt that, all right, we need to get back to the business of the city. He said what he needed to say. Let's move on. Well, the apology was a word. It was a word. Apologizing for what? He didn't, there was no object to the verb apologize. And I think when we apologize to one another on a human level, in a relationship or in a work environment, we say, I take personal accountability for this and this action. But what is he apologizing for? And I think what Torontonians want to know is, is that, yes, the mayor has turned a leaf, but turned a leaf on what? Until he actually says, this is what I did, this is how I'm going to take account, you can't really accept any apology, in my, to my mind. Mm -hmm. So where do you see this going from here? Well, I think democracy brought the mayor in, and it looks like we have to wait a year for democracy to basically take him out if that's what Torontonians want. I suspect that this next year there will be a very animated conversation over the kind of city that we want, over the kind of mayor that we want, whether we want to continue in this divisive political environment or whether we want a mayor that can bring sides together, that can deal at a table with differences and find commonality. Uh, I think that's the challenge before the City of Toronto. He obviously has some support and obviously he has a lot of opposition as well. Now we have to start talking as Torontonians about one city that brings people together. Mm -hmm. I'm running out of time, but I just want to ask you quickly. You mentioned there's a divisive political environment in City Hall. I don't want you to, you know, it's not about spilling all the beans, but what is that like to be in there, in that environment? Well, it, it is hard because you're always looking over your back uh, and you're trying, usually most councillors, left, right, centre, uptown, downtown, we, w we believe in the public good that there is such a thing and we try to bring bring people together. When you 
put in really a poisonous element that says you're different than me, new immigrants belong, old immigrants don't belong, and, um, or uptown versus downtown, or if you're a car driver, you're good, if you're a bicycle rider, you're bad. Um, that's really... Sounds like you're always picking sides somewhere. You're always picking yeah. sides. And there are ways in which we can develop public policy that respects car drivers and bicyclists mm -hmm. and public transit riders and people who pay taxes and people who need the services that taxes support. And that's the sweet spot that I think Torontonians are searching for. All right, Joe Mahavik, thanks so much for coming in. We appreciate your thoughts. Thank you.